Fox Sports. We are Fox. We are Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is presented by Bell Tire. This season, Rick Porcello has been one of the Tigers' most consistent starting pitchers. And in 10 starts this year, Rick with a record of 8 2, a very good ERA of 3.68. Porcello will hope to spin his magic here tonight as we welcome you to Comerica Park. It'll be the second game of the series featuring the Toronto Blue Jays and your Detroit Tigers. Hi again, everyone, and welcome to Tigers Baseball. Mario and Pemba alongside Rod Allen. Glad to have you with us here for Game 2 of the series. Tigers trying to bounce back another tough loss in last night's ball game. Rod, but let's move forward now. Porcello on the hill tonight. He's been good. You know, he stubbed his toe uh, last time out. He walked six. Career high was only four uh, in the base on balls column before that start uh, that he had five days ago. But he has eight wins. Only one other pitcher in the majors has more wins than him, and that would be Mark Gerberly of the Toronto Blue Jays. This Blue Jays team is an outstanding offensive club. Rick Porcello simply got to mix up all his bitches. All right, what do you got on R.A. Dickey? Here's the guy that obviously won the Cy Young a couple of years ago, had a fabulous season, but what is the Tigers' approach tonight facing the knuckleballer? Well, one of the things that you have to do against a guy that throws a knuckleball is you have to see the ball up in the strike zone, and if you get it up in the strike zone, that's where you do your damage. And when the ball starts right around your thighs, it's going to get down around your ankles. That's going to be a ball. Something else I've noticed about R.A. Dickey watching his last start, he is throwing a lot more fastballs this year. His fastball registered by 82 83, and that's how he kind of keeps you honest. He also does a very nice job at handling the running game for a guy that throws a knuckleball exclusively. Tigers have to see the ball up if they're going to have success tonight against Dickey. All right, should be a fun one here tonight. Game two in the series coming up after a short break. Back to the Call Sam Studios with Trevor Thompson. Coming up, game two. Tigers trying to even up the series next.
to the ball club in a way that only the Tigers veterans can do. And we are just about set for baseball here tonight at the ballpark. Tigers and the Blue Jays going at it. Game two in the series. Jays starting lineup presented by the Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. Reyes Cabrera Bautista at the top. Adam Lynn, the DH, is cleaning up, followed by Encarnacion, Francisco. Brett Laurie had a big three run shot last night. Josh Tolley and Anthony Ghost round out the lineup for the Blue Jays. They will face the right hander, Rick Porcello, brought to you by Family Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. Uh, Porcello has been outstanding this year. Eight wins, just two losses, the ERA just over three and a half. Had some command issues his last time out. He walked six, and that's not Rick Porcello. He'll need to be a little bit more efficient here today. And Jose Reyes leads it off and pops up the first pitch of the ball game. First baseman, second baseman, and it's the second baseman, Kinsler, who makes the catch. One pitch, one out. Yeah, this is the way the Tigers' defensive alignment looks this evening. Davis back in there. He's in left field. You have Jackson in center, T. Hunter in right. Cassianos, Romine, Kinsler, Miggy in the infield. Alex Avila, uh, he has been tremendous at throwing out uh, base runners this year. He has caught 16, which leads the majors. Rajay in the lineup tonight playing out in left field. And now here is Melky Cabrera batting in the two slot for the Jays tonight. He looks at a strike 0 and 1. Cabrera in last night's opener was 0 for 4, batting 303, having a very solid season, as are most of these Blue Jays. Made him move his feet, one ball, one strike. It's only been two days, but top to bottom, uh, this may be the best offensive lineup uh, that we have seen that the Tigers have gone up against. I would say so. I know the A's have won a lot of ball games, but offensively, this team, I think, is better. 1-1 one, one is fouled back. They got a couple of switch hitters at the top. Both guys can run. Both guys create havoc. Uh, they got some big body guys that drive the ball out of the ballpark to bat in the middle of the batting order. That would be Bautista, Lind, and also Encarnacion. Cabrera at 471 against Porcello. 1 2 bouncing in, two balls and two strikes. Rick Porcello has had a tremendous season so far for the Tigers. A very consistent year. His ERA at 368. Start number 11 in this one here tonight. Now the 2 2. Foul back out of play. I was listening to uh, Trevor Thompson on the pregame show today and he said Rick Porcello's eight wins. He has gotten to the eight wins one month faster than any time in his big league career. Well, there you go. Only two defeats. Here's the two two again. And he missed outside three and two. Well if he walks him it's something. And he's only walked 15 total times this year. And he plays every single day. We're two months in, and Cabrera's only walked 15 times. Full count pitch is hit in the air to right field and hit well. That ball is way back, and he's not going to walk here unless you count walking around the bases. It's it like a walk. He's trotting. Cabrera hits his ninth of the year, and the Jays, who lead the American League in homers, have hit yet another. Thirty first RBI for Melky and Melky got himself a ninety two mile per hour fastball that really didn't do a whole lot sitting right on the inner third of home plate and simply opened up the hips and got the bat head in the strike zone and he allowed Rick Porcello to supply a lot of that power. Jays fans and there are quite a few of them here in the ballpark celebrating early tonight. One nothing Toronto and there's a strike call to Jose Bautista. It'll make him 500 now against Porcello, nine for 18. The 01, Bautista slicing one to right field. Hunter coming on. Two gone. Well, we've had some rain in the area here today. The field conditions tonight presented by Ace Hardware and the Scotts Company. 66 degrees, a little bit wet. And cloudy here this evening, but they say the main rain has moved out of the area, which is good. They took the tarp off the field about 45 minutes ago, got the field ready, and here we are. Here is Adam Lind, who last night was 0 for 3. He's batting in the cleanup slot tonight. They play the shift on for Lind to the right side. 
Last night he batted fifth in the lineup behind Encarnacion. They have flip flopped here this evening. Here's the 0 1. Big swing there by Lind 0 2. Lind, his power numbers are down. He's only hit three homers this year, but he's batting a cool 347. Yeah, he has only three home runs, but that average is way up. 15 RBIs. That'll get back out of play. Well, based on what the Jays have been able to do offensively this year, if they get the solid starting pitching they have gotten recently, it's going to be a real dangerous team. That's one of the reasons why they are in first place as we speak in the American League East. Not so much they're hitting. It helps, but they've got some nice contributions from their pitchers. That kid last night, Hutchinson, was really good. And, of course, uh, Mark Burley, he's residing on a different planet right now. And we'll see R.A. Dickey tonight going for Toronto. One ball, two strikes on Adam Lynn. That's in the air down the left field line, slicing. And it's going to land foul with the shift on. Romine had no chance to get there. One and two, the count stays on Lynn. There is Mark Burley, who has had a fantastic start to this year. Burley leads the American League with 10 wins. Look at that ERA. 2.10. Missed with a breaking ball. The count evens now 2 2. Mark Burley, the leader in the clubhouse right now to uh, start the All Star game in Minnesota. Agreed. That'll be played in Minneapolis this year. He's a big guy. I walked by him in the clubhouse today. I did not realize he was as big as he is. And I'm not talking about. Height, but he's just well put together. And it is popped up, foul ground, first base side, Cabrera. And that'll end the inning. Jays get a run on the homer by Melky Cabrera. Tigers who now trail the Blue Jays 1-0 as we head to the bottom of the first Tiger starting lineup today. Presented by the Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Davis, Kinsler, Cabrera, your top three. Victor Martinez, two more hits in last night's ball game. DHing, followed by Hunter and Jackson. And then you've got Avila, Castellanos, and Romine. Your bottom three tonight, Brad Austin. And they are facing the knuckleballer, R.A. Dickey. Well, Tigers hitter is not to take themselves too seriously here today. When you go up against a knuckleballer, don't think about your mechanics. Simply see the ball up in the strike, strike zone. Try to hit the ball the other way. If he makes a mistake inside, you'll turn on him naturally. Uh, he's having a decent year, 5-4 and four for the Blue Jays with an ERA. Uh, that is not as low as he'd like for it to be, but he's pitched some really good games this year for the Blue Jays. And we'll see how the Tigers do against him here tonight. Davis leads it off. Then Kinsler and then Cabrera. Rajay batting 288. And he looks at a ball low and away, 1 0. In on the grass at third base, and now 
backing up Francisco in a ball high. Well, the Blue Jays, they know Rajay Davis. One of the things that he does not do a lot of, he does not bunt down toward third base for bunts hit base hits. Two and one. Therefore, he's getting as much room down that third baseline as you'll see any leadoff hitter. That's it for a strike. That's something that R.A. Dickey will do a lot of here today. I watched his last start and he threw a lot of fastballs around 82 to 84 miles an hour to keep the hitters honest. No one just missed and the count fills now three and two. And it's got to seem like 90 coming in. No doubt. Following that knuckleball. Here's a three two. Swing and a miss and there you go. So Davis was late on the fastball at 83. That's what happens if you start to look for that knuckleball, which you should. Uh, he'll throw that fastball right down the middle, and you'll see some big league hitters take swings like that. First strike out of the ball game for Dickey, and now Kinsler will stand in. Ian Savage now at an even 300 was hitless in last night's game, 0 for 3. Ball one outside. Up and in two and oh. With a knuckleballer you would think that a lot of times the walk numbers would be high but Dickey has walked just one in each of his last two starts. Hasn't had too many high walk games and he's gone to three and oh now on Kinsler. Waiting on deck Miguel Cabrera. Dickey now 39 years old. That's in for a strike. Back when he made uh, when he won the Cy Young pitching for the New York Mets two years ago he was 37 and made his first all star team at age 37. That's popped up right side of the infield. Brett Laurie is under it and there are two gone now. I remember there was a little controversy there because really he should have started the All Star game that year. But Tony La Russa went with someone else. I'm trying to think of who it was, but R.A. Dickey should have been the one starting the All Star game that year. Well, here is Miguel Cabrera standing in. Interesting matchup here. Cabrera hitting 321 for the season. And he hammers one in the air. Deep left field, way back, and we are tied. Oh, Miggy hit it a long way. Number 11 for Cabrera. I guess the two Cabreras getting busy here early tonight. <laughs> Melky has played long ball, and Miggy has just left the building. It is a good night to be named Cabrera. Now, who in the world goes up there looking for a fastball? That pitch was 83 miles an hour against a knuckleballer who throws primarily knuckleballs. But Mickey got a fastball 83 and seemed like he was sitting there waiting for it. Two out solo shot. And that Cabrera fan is celebrating. There's a ball inside. Last year, Dickey gave up 35 home runs, so he is prone to giving up the long ball. That ballpark that he plays his home games in, too, though, uh, you will yield quite a few if you play your home games in Toronto. It's a good place to hit homers. 2 0 now on Martinez. And 35 that he gave up last year was the second most in the majors. And Victor looks at a strike two and one. Home run number seven allowed this year by R.A. Dickey. Victor takes ball three three and one and Martinez who came in leading the league in hitting. And to be perfectly honest with you R.A. Dickey uh, he doesn't mind so much if uh, Victor walks right here. Ooh, a strike call. Martinez was headed to first base and it looked high, but Jim Wolf said, Nope. 
A quizzical look from Victor Martinez. Wow. That was way off. There's the 3 2. There's ball four. Take one more look at the uh, Miguel Cabrera first inning home run against R.A. Dickey. Fastball right down the middle. And Miguel sitting there waiting for him. By the way, we got an answer to who started the National League All Star game that year instead of Dickey. It was Matt Kane. Mm. He got the call instead of R.A., who would go on to win the Cy Young. So here's Torrey Hunter now. As Torrey steps in, time for the Bernstein advantage, and it belongs to Hunter. 400 batting average versus R.A. Dickey. Martinez on with two outs. Little chopper hits slowly towards short. Reyes has it. He'll go the short way for the four, sending the inning. Tigers tied up though on the Miguel Cabrera solo shot. Game with two outs, and it tied the game at one. The second there is the newest Tiger Eugenio Suarez who was called up today from the minor leagues and uh, the Tigers made a move today right and of course some bad news for Danny Worth. Well he was playing some good baseball down in double A and also triple A Dave Dabrowski did not make the last road trip to Oakland nor Seattle. He went down to watch uh, some of the minor league teams play. I'm sure he saw Suarez while he was down there and they need a little bit more production offensively at the shortstop position and he has gotten better as a hitter. And that would be Suarez. And so Suarez expect him to get the start tomorrow at short for Detroit. In the series finale against the Jays. Encarnacion leads it off. Facing Rick Porcello. One run on one hit for both teams. They were homers. Both Cabreras. Melky and Miguel. Here's the 1-0. Encarnacion, Francisco, and Laurie here in the second for Toronto. Encarnacion's got a little mean look on his face, like he just means to do some damage to the baseball, doesn't he? He does have that look. And he's done a lot of damage. Yes. I mean, here's a guy that hit 16 home runs in the month of May. Player of the month in the American League. He had five multi homer games last month. I saw that. Five of them. Dangerous count here for Porcello if you decide to throw a fastball. Good pitch. Curveball at 85 miles an hour. Ball. I think Carnacion upset himself that he did swing at it, but 
And Rick Porcello took a little off. Two and two on Edwin Encarnacion. There's popped up foul out of play. Albert Bell back in 95, Harmon Killebrew in May of 59. Killer. That was his nickname. And he was the nicest man you'd ever want to meet. And his nickname was Killer. Here's the 2 2. Right back up the middle and into center field. That is something that Encarnacion is doing a lot more of these days. He's driving the ball up the middle. He's taking some hits the other way. He's just not all that pull happy this year. A little breaking ball that's out over the plate. He's not trying to do too much with it. Simply taking and what Porcello was giving him, and that was basically a base hit. Here comes the shift now as Francisco stands in. 276 batting average had a double in last night's ball game. They cannot get him out of the lineup. And he has nine homers and he's driven in 24. Most of his at bats come against right handed pitching. And it's a little low. One ball, no strikes on Juan Francisco. Split time last year with Milwaukee and Atlanta, and in his two stops, he hit 18 home runs. He's got half of those already this year with nine. Jays have the leadoff man on. Two and all the count. Francisco with his nine home runs seven of those as well came in the month of May it was a month that really propelled Toronto into first place in the American League East a little chopper to first foul two balls in one strike Brett Laurie waiting on deck. Crowd's still settling into this one. We've already had a couple of home runs in this game. Here's the 2 1. It's inside. Three balls and one strike on Francisco. Porcello beat Oakland in his last start despite walking six in that contest. Gave up a couple of runs at five and two thirds, but you talk about walking the tightrope with six base on balls. It was his eighth win of the year. Bouncing ball towards second. Kinsler has it. Tags the runner one, and there's a double play. Encarnacion simply ran into the out there, basically gave himself up and made it an easy double play for Ian Kinsler. Four three on the double play as Porcello gets his ground ball. Here's Fred Laurie. And as it turned out he hit a huge three run homer in the five run ninth last night for the Blue Jays. The Tigers picked up three runs on a homer by J.D. Martinez ended up losing the game five to three. Laurie said that the scouting report on Al Albuquerque was one that told him with two strikes Albuquerque goes to a slider. And so Laurie was looking for that slider and he got one up and hit a three run bomb. Uh, to right field. One ball, one strike. Ninth home run of the year last night for Brett Laurie. Here's the 1 1. Line to the left, base hit. Maybe more. Let's see. Davis gets over there quickly. Laurie puts on the brakes after a wide turn. Two out single. Brett Laurie plays the game like his hair is on fire at a thousand miles an hour. He got a hanging breaking ball from Rick Porcello and take a look at how aggressive he runs down the baseline and rounds this ball on a routine single. I mean 100 out of 100 times the left fielder is probably going to field that ball cleanly.
But that's the way you're taught to do it, though. You're taught to put pressure on the outfielder when you get a base hit. Make them stop you. Here's Josh Tolley, the catcher. Ball one inside. Tolley batting 340. He is the, as they called it, personal catcher for R.A. Dickey. So he's behind the dish tonight. Most knuckleballers have that one guy that they like to throw to. That's a good gig if you can get it. Yeah. Try to hold up, couldn't do it. One and one on Tolley. Four years with the Mets. The uh, Blue Jays had J.P. and Sebia. They let him walk as a free agent from last year's team. Navarro and Tolley, the catchers on this year's club. Blowing away two and one. Waiting on deck, the guy who started the winning rally last night, Anthony Ghost. Quick throw and stumbling back to there is Lori. Lori has not stolen this year. And Porcello employing the Max Scherzer holding of the baseball a little bit before he threw it to first base. 67% in his career. One one game we're in the second the Jays have three hits they have bounced into a double play in this inning though. Here's the two one. Down the left field line foul two balls two strikes on Josh Tolley. For Rick Porcello in his six May starts in five of them he allowed two earned runs or fewer. And as a result his ERA coming in a little over three and a half. We fought that one off grounds it foul. Two to the Cal stays. Another foul back out of play, so he continues to drive up the early pitch count here at Porcello. Blue Jays do a lot of that. They're a much better team at making contact this year under their new hitting coach, Kevin Seitzer, who preaches using the big part of the ballpark up the middle, right center field, left center field. They had several good at bats. I mean, working the pitch count of Anibal Sanchez last night. They couldn't hit Anibal, but Anibal's pitch count got to him. Sanchez in last night's ball game would end up going seven innings and Annabelle retired the last 10 straight that he faced had seven three ball counts and that's probably the difference in him going back out for the eighth inning last night again back out of play yeah, his pitch count was to the point where Brad said that well if we let him go out one more inning we'll be uncomfortable with where his pitch count would end up so they decided to take him out after 107. Can't pitch any better than Sanchez has pitched uh, since coming off the disabled list with that blister issue. Boy, Tolly is giving Porcello fits. I was down in uh, John Gibbons' office uh, talking to him before the game, and he couldn't stop talking about the job that Sanchez did last night against his club. He watches uh, his offense do serious damage every night, but. They were very uncomfortable against Annabelle last night. That is five straight foul balls now by Tolley. Yeah, fastball upstairs might get you strike three right here. Bouncing ball back up the middle. Kinsler on the move. Tolley is out. Side retired. No runs, two hits, one left.
Stars have homered Melky and Miggy in the contest. And let's take a look at the Toronto Blue Jays starting defense. It's the same defense that the Tigers saw last night. Uh, Melky Cabrera, their left fielder, a 989 career fielding percentage, has not committed an error this year and has a really good throwing arm from left field. Jays defense tonight brought to you by Tim Hortons. And the Tigers now in a 1 1 game will send Jackson to the plate. Melky Cabrera is already homered in this game tonight for the Jays. So is Miguel Cabrera. That's how we've gotten to our 1 1 score. Austin last night was 0 for 3. The average now is dipped to 237. And R.A. Dickey back to work and he throws a strike. Jackson Avila Castellanos here in the second inning. Now the 0 1. Outside, one ball, one strike. Two and one the count. For a guy like Jackson that's trying to break out of a rough spell, I'm not sure facing a knuckleballer is a good thing or a bad thing. Well, what you have to do is you have to spread out if you're Austin Jackson. He has scuffled the last 20 ball games. The batting average is below 200. Swing and a miss. So your, goes. your approach should be to spread out and basically just try to hit everything to right field. That way you get a good look at the baseball and you don't swing at balls that are out of the strike zone. This is the nasty knuckleball right here, simply dancing away from Jackson. That's something about the R.A. Dickey knuckleball. I mean, it dances every which away. That'll be his second strikeout of the contest. Here is Alex Avila. 0 for 3 in last night's opener. Ball one. Dickey didn't have quite the year that the Blue Jays were hoping for coming off his Cy Young season, but last year down the stretch he was good. Last two months of the year was six and two. 3.34 ERA. That's in there a strike. And really overall, I mean he won 14 games, threw over 200 innings, struck out 177. That's not a bad year. But when it's on the backdrop in the uh, in the shadow of a Cy Young season, it doesn't look quite as good. And their team played so poorly last year. Rip to right, base hit. One on, one out. By the way, our predictions for tonight's Fox Sports Detroit Tigers player of the game presented by McDonald's Frozen Strawberry Lemonade. Only at McDonald's. I'm going with Nick C tonight. Austin Jackson is my pick this evening. And the crew's going with Rajay Davis. They didn't play the shift uh, the last time on Avila, and he simply hit one where the second baseman is usually standing in the outfield. Alex is happy that they didn't play yeah. the shift that time. They may change that in the next at bat. We'll see. Castellanos looks at a strike. Nick at 235. He's hit four home runs. Did not play last night. Don Kelly started at third base for Detroit. One ball, one strike on Castellanos. Dickey last year, 14 and 13, made 34 starts. So he went out there every fifth day for the Blue Jays. Said he wasn't healthy the first couple of months of the season. He was battling a back injury, but he continued to pitch through it. Numbers weren't pretty. At the start of last season. In the air to center, hit well, playable though. Anthony Ghost. The Vila retreats. Kobe Rasmus is their everyday center fielder, but talking to some people that follow the Blue Jays on a day to day basis, they say watching Ghost in center field is simply amazing. They say that he is a tremendous center fielder. I mean, tremendous center field. I think most would agree that Rasmus is the better offensive player of the two, but what Ghost has provided with the glove has been really good. Here's Romine. Way outside, 1 0 on Romine.
Slice to left field, base hit. Nicely done. He went the other way, and the Tigers now have two men on. He'll keep the inning going for Rajay Davis. He got himself a tailing fastball that was away from him at 80 miles an hour, and real good concentration there by Andrew Romine. And getting himself a solid single into left field. That's a two seam fastball. Davis struck out in his first at bat. Swing and a miss, 0 and 1. Dickey last year led the Jays in starts, innings pitched, and strikeouts. The 0 1 is fouled back, 0 and 2 on Davis. Jim Wolf, the uh, home plate umpire uh, this evening, is the older brother of Randy Wolf. He's a big league pitcher and uh, pitching for the Miami Marlins. And if they're ever together and his umpiring crew is umpiring a game where Randy is pitching, Jim cannot work home plate. Seems fair. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Would you like to have your brother calling balls and strikes? It'd be real nice. <laughs> Come on, bro. One ball, two strikes. Conflict of interest, I think, is what you'd call that. That's what they call it. That's what they would call it. Here's the one-two. Swing and a miss. Ranjay goes down, and the inning is over. Another strikeout for Dickey. It'll be his third of the game. You're watching Tigers baseball tonight, presented by Bell Tire. This year, he got his eighth win on May 29th, and you take a look at prior years him getting to that eighth victory last year, July 28th. In 2012, it took him all the way to August to get that eighth win. So Porcello clearly uh, doing some things this year that he hasn't done in the past, and uh, he's been real good. Well, a lot of people said coming into the season that this would be the year that Rick finally takes that next step, becomes a consistent winner, although. You could make the argument that a guy that's double digits every year in his career is pretty consistent. Great mound presence. He's got a real good two seam fastball. A two ground balls for every fly ball thrown for Rick in his big league career. Anthony Ghost will lead it off for the Blue Jays and he waves and misses. That's one of the things he's done. He'd go upstairs with the 88, 90 mile power fastball. He'll throw you that slow curveball and then he gives you that real good two seamer to get the ground balls. That he's able to rack up on a nightly basis. Ghost looks at a strike in the count of zone two. And the big walk last night in the ninth inning, which got it started for the Blue Jays. They would end up scoring five runs in the ninth. 
Fouled straight back. It's such a strange ball game. Only the uh, second time in the history of the game that eight or more runs were scored in the ninth inning to snap a scoreless tie. It's only happened a couple of times. 93 was the other time. Bouncing in, and the count is one and two. One run on three hits for both sides. Each team with a solo homer in the first, Melky Cabrera, Miguel Cabrera. Got him, strike three. Ghost is caught looking. One gone, time for a game break now. Back to the studio we go with Mickey York. All right, Mick, thanks. As we play here in the third, the Tigers won and the Jays won. It has turned into a, a nice evening here. Sun is uh, making its way through the clouds, and that's a good thing. Tarp was on about, I don't know, 40 minutes or so before the game started. Got the field ready to go, and it is turning out to be a nice night. Sky's clearing up, as you can see. Well, at least the sun is shining. Two balls, no strikes on Jose Reyes. And the outer edge, two and one. Reyes popped up on the game's first pitch. Drops down a bunt. Porcello on the bare hand. Nice play. Rick Porcello is a really good athlete. He got off the mound in a hurry. He didn't panic. He simply barehanded the baseball, took one step toward a first base because he knew he needed to get a little extra on the throw to get to Speedy Reyes. And he got him. Here's Melky Cabrera. Solo homer to right in his first at bat. Ninth of the year. Ball one high. The Blue Jays offense has been able to compile and put up the numbers they've been able to put up despite their leadoff hitter Reyes. Not really doing all that well so far this year. Wait till they get him going. Drill to left field. Rajay Davis was in his tracks. Now he'll back up, and it's a one, two, three inning for Porcello. On our way to the bottom of the third. Detroit is brought to you by Comerica Bank, a part of Detroit and the community since 1849. By Dodge, hurry into the Dodge 100-year event. See how good we look for our age. 
And by Johnsonville, sausage is all we can do. It has turned into a nice evening here at the ballpark. The Tigers Jays getting together here in game two in the series. Hopefully the Tigers headed back to postseason this year. So she can get a brand new hat. Here is Ian Kinsler to start things off. Kinsler and then Cabrera and then Martinez. Strike one on Ian. Since Kinsler got that day off, uh, the first day in Oakland, his bat has uh, been considerably cooled off. Uh oh. Well, how about that? He's got an answer, perhaps. Track wall gone. Nice timing. It is everything. <laughs> Second home run for the Tigers in this game. Remember that game that Dickey pitched in Texas against the Tigers, and he gave up about five home runs. Six. <laughs> Brandon Ames got him a couple of times. Seymour got him. Marcus Timms got him. Kinsler was playing for the Texas Rangers at that time. And he got his former teammate here with a knuckleball. He lifted and separated and it hit it into the Tigers' bullpen. You know, that game you're talking about was actually the first game that Dickey pitched as a knuckleballer in the big league. Yep. Mm -hmm. He had gone down in the minor leagues to learn the pitch. And his first start, the Tigers got him for six homers. Yeah, they treated him badly that evening. Even Red Pop had a couple that night. <laughs> Chris Shelton. Yeah. Orange Crush. Yeah. We had him going straight to the Hall of Fame. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> I mean, he tore it up in April. He did. One ball, one strike on Miguel Cabrera. Miggy had the other Tigers homer back in the first. Fouled straight back. One and two the count. Waiting on deck, Victor Martinez. Foul tip into the glove. It'll be a strikeout for R.A. Dickey and his fourth of the contest now. And it'll bring up Martinez. I don't know how many knuckleballers you faced over your career, whether it was the minors or the big leagues. But did you enjoy facing them? I really had no problem with uh, knuckleballers. I mean, because you just have to, you have to have a mindset of you're not going to be all that aggressive that day. You're not thinking about mechanics. You're simply thinking about using the big part of the ballpark. And if you see the ball up, uh, you swing at it. anything around the waist. It's going to usually be a ball. So uh, it, it's a difficult challenge, but they weren't. Uh, that troublesome for me and there wasn't that many obviously you didn't see that many knuckleballers in the minor leagues. I didn't see any knuckleballers when I played in Japan. I mean Ari Dickey I mean he's the only one in the big leagues isn't he? He is. That's it right now. No balls two strikes on Martinez. Fouled off. The other thing that uh, folks want to know is can it mess up your swing for the next couple of days? Absolutely. That's why a lot of switch hitters, and Victor's not doing so today, uh, nor is Andrew Romine doing so today, but there are a lot of switch hitters. When they go up against R.A. Dickey, they will not bat left handed. They will bat right handed because they don't want to mess up their left handed swing. And, but it's kind of hard to mess up V Mark swing right now. Way high, one and two. All right, Dickey allowing a home run in the first and now here in the third. I guess technically now that Danny Worth was sent down, he is the only knuckleballer in the league. That's right. And Danny, of course, was a part time pitcher. Yeah, he threw a few floaters up there. Two and two. Grounded right side on the backhand there, Encarnacion. Dickey covering. Two gone. Well, Comerica Park Party Suites for select Gi uh, July games are discounted 30 bucks per person and include a $300 food credit plus an overnight stay at Motor City Casino Hotel. There's the phone number. 
313-471-2255. Like more information or simply go to Tigers.com. 2-1 ball game. Tigers have the lead. Torrey Hunter stands in. Bounced out his first time up. Technically hitting into a force his first time up. And he shoots one to right field, sinking, and a diving try and play by Bautista in right. He is getting off on uh, both sides of the ball this year. Good defender, outstanding hitter. Tumbling play takes away a base hit from Torrey Hunter. Nicely done. Off here in the top half of the fourth inning, and he's become more of a complete hitter uh, these days under their new hitting coach, Kevin Sicer. He is bought into beating the shift by going the opposite way. Here's a guy that is a dead pull hitter before this year. Only 17 hits to right field last year for Bautista. He does lots of damage, hits lots of balls over the fence, but the batting average well over 300 this year because he's been an unselfish hitter, simply taking that base hit the opposite way for several base hits. Bautista came into the season as a career 254 hitter. 18 hits already this year. I just told you only 17 hits to right field last year, all season for Jose Bautista. So he is clearly beating the shift, and he's caused teams not to overshift him these days because he is willing to take that base hit the other way. He's hit over 300 once in his big league career. That was back in. The 2010 where he had a monster season. Oh, look at that play by Romain, but he appears to be hurt. Yep. We're going to see Suarez early tonight. Romain is down on his back in short left field after making a tremendous diving play. That'll be an infield hit for Bautista. There is Suarez taking the jacket off just in case. Didn't look good initially. Well, he's in some kind of pain. He couldn't get up. Kevin Rand, the head athletic trainer, is out there to scope him out. Don't know for sure, but anytime you see someone dive like that and then hold the shoulder, it pops out mm -hmm. momentarily. That's only speculation. But that's exactly what it looks like. I think Roman wants to continue to play this game. We'll see if they let him. Meanwhile, Suarez called up today, getting loose.
He was down at triple A and it looks like Roman will stay in the game. Outstanding play there by Roman. And Bautista hit a rocket that looked like he was headed in the left field. He dove for it and was able to slow it down. He would have had a difficult time of throwing Bautista out, but it's a great effort by Andrew. So the leadoff man is on now for Toronto. Adam Lynn will stand in. Castellanos moves from his third base spot across the diamond. He is between Kinsler and Cabrera. Ball one to Lynn. That base hit is the fourth of the game for the Jays. Both teams now with four hits. Lynn is now 0 for 4 in the series. He has an RBI. Here's the 1 0. Ground ball to second. Kinsler has it. Fires to Romine. One. And a double play. The Tigers turn two again for the second time tonight. Porcello does a very nice job of making sure when someone does get a base hit that base runner stays there uh, He doesn't allow them to steal and that's a ball hit sharply off the bat of Lind He gets it to Romine and that's an easy double play Here's Encarnacion Romine had no trouble at all on that turn and Carnacion takes outside. Singled back in the second. Two and all the count. And Carnacion has that slightly open stance. He closes up just a hair when the ball is delivered toward home plate, but he loves to cheat on balls that are on the inner third because of his setup. Two and one. And Carnacion spent parts of five years with the Reds, and many thought, well, how could they let him get away? And Carnacion has been somewhat of a late bloomer. He was in that Scott Rowland deal. Scott Rowland went to play for Cincinnati. Yeah, he provided quite a bit for them down the stretch. And uh, the Reds are quick to point out that the Blue Jays actually. Waved Encarnacion. He went to the A's, who then got rid of him, and then back to the Blue Jays. So at one point, even Toronto had given up on Encarnacion. But they got him a second time, and now he's just tearing it up. Here's the 2 2. High, towering fly ball to left. It's going toward the corner. Rajay runs out of room. Kevin Seitzer is uh, getting a lot of recognition for. Uh, what this Blue Jays offense is doing this year, but a couple of years ago when Bautista and also Encarnacion had their breakout seasons, it was Dwayne Murphy who was their hitting coach who had these guys feasting on fastballs. Kevin Seitzer, he has a different approach. But Dwayne Murphy did marvelous work with uh, the Blue Jays hitters when he was their hitting coach. Well, under Seitzer, the Jays lead the American League in extra base hits this year. They have four hits in this contest. A home run from Cabrera. Here's the 2 2. Lifted back out of play. Already 62 pitches, 63 now thrown by Porcello. So uh, this Blue Jays team, man, they are, they wear you down. And that's even with a couple of double plays. Swing and a miss. That'll end the inning. Encarnacion down on strikes. Double play helps out the cause here in the fourth. Three and a half in the books here at Comerica Park. Tigers up by a run.
Photo using hashtag Detroit Fan Photo for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming game broadcast. Brought to you by AT&T. There is the hashtag again, Detroit Fan Photo. Well, the Tigers have the lead in this one. Is a skinny lead though. They have had a couple of homers in this game. Cabrera and Kinsler both solo shots. Versus R. A. Dickey. And it'll be Austin Jackson to start things off here in the fourth. Jackson, Avila, Castellanos. Ball one missing outside. AJ struck out his first time up and he waves and misses. One and one. That's the knuckleball right there that you want to hit. That one that's up, that's hanging, that's not dancing too much. Two and one. When the Blue Jays acquired Dickey a couple of years ago, they sent a couple of really good prospects to the Mets. Here's a soft liner to right field, and Bautista with a sliding catch. AJ can't buy one now. One gone. Going to bring up Alex Avila. Another nice sliding play by Jose Bautista in right field. Took a hit away from Tory Hunter to end the, uh, the bottom half of the third. Avila had a single back in the second. Batting average of 208 now. Dickey waiting patiently as Avila stands in. And he pops up the first pitch, shallow right field. Bautista calling off his second baseman, Lori. Two gone. A couple of flies to right. Two up, two down. Hey, just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game. Brought to you by Miller Light. Here's Castellanos. Fly to center field back in the second. Go for one. That floats in for a strike. The two prospects that the Blue Jays gave up to the Mets, Travis Darno, one of the top catching prospects, and Noah Sindergaard, who is a really good pitching prospect, doing well right now and knocking on the door for the Mets. He's a solid single to left. Two out base hit for Castellanos. Now Andrew Romine. You know, a lot of times organizations really are leery of giving up some of their best prospects, but as they say, until they prove it in the big league level, they're just that prospect. Well, the Blue Jays felt like they had a legitimate chance of uh, winning last year. And when they acquired Dickey, they also made a huge trade with the uh, Miami Marlins and getting several really good players. Jose Reyes was in that deal. Mark Burley was in that deal. So many injuries last year, though, derailed their chances. They just couldn't keep a lot of guys in the lineup. Runner going, and no chance. Stolen base, Castellanos. That's surprising with Dickey on the mound. Dickey usually does a very nice job at limiting uh, the stolen bases against him, even though he throws a knuckleball. But Castellanos, he had a huge jump. First steal of the year for Castellanos. Career in his career. Ball outside. Two and one. Romine singled the other way his first time up, trying to drive in another run for Detroit. They got one in the first, one in the third. Three and one. On the outer edge, full count now on Romine, three and two. 
Andrew had his modest three game hitting streak snap last night has started another one here tonight. Way outside walked him. So after a couple of quick outs single steal and a walk. And just that quickly the Tigers have a threat. This is the second walk of the game now for R.A. Dickey. Rajay's had a difficult time tonight. His first two at bats, a couple of strikeouts against the knuckleballer. Oh and one. Davis. Three seasons with the Toronto Blue Jays facing his old team hit 260 last year in a Jays uniform. It'll go foul and the count quickly on two. Rajay uh, helped the Blue Jays win a lot of games uh, with his legs making some tremendous plays defensively in the outfield. 252 in his career in the three years there with the Blue Jays 15 home runs nearly 100 RBIs. And he stole 125 bases in the three seasons there. Behind the count here one and two. Laid off. Did not go. Two and two the count. Bouncing ball left side. It'll find a hole. Base hit. Castellanos going to be held at third base. It's a wise decision by Dave Clark, the third base coach, with Melky Cabrera uh, occupying left field. He already has five assists, and he is a left fielder with a right fielder's arm. Take a look at the pitch by pitch. R.A. Dickey going after Davis, who had struck out already twice in the game. One thing Rajay does, he does better work with runners on base versus bases empty. Dave Clark was all over Castellanos making sure he stopped and got back to the bag. It was looking like it was going to be a very quick inning for R.A. Dickey, but then a single, a walk, and a base hit. It's going to set up Ian Kinsler with an opportunity. In for a strike, 0 1. Kinsler had a homer in his last at bat. He does not have a grand slam in his career. Fly ball right field. Bautista going back. He is under it to end the threat. Tigers lead and loaded.
Fox Sports Detroit is brought to you by the Sam Bernstein Law Firm, official legal services sponsor of Fox Sports Detroit, and by the new Chevy Silverado light duty and heavy duty lineup. Back here at Comerica Park, the Tigers and the Toronto Blue Jays hooking up in game two in the series, two on in favor of Detroit. Tigers using a couple of home run balls and now Rick Porcello going back to the hill in the fifth inning. By the way join us again tomorrow the Tigers wrapping up this series with the Jays our coverage begins at noon day baseball here tomorrow Tigers live cranks up at noon Tigers and Jays tomorrow right here on Fox Sports Detroit. Porcello has induced a couple of double play balls in this game. Juan Francisco will lead it off. Way outside 1 0. Francisco, then Laurie, and then Tony. These are the six, seven, and eight hitters. Francisco has one of the double play balls. Way outside, 2 0. Big swing there, 2 and 1. Francisco was tardy on an 87 mile per hour fastball up in the zone. Now they 2 1. 2 and 2 on Juan Francisco. Good change up there thrown by Porcello. And that's one of the reasons why he's won eight games. He changes speeds very well. He works at the bottom of the zone with the two seam fastball, the change up, and the curveball is developing into a big league, major league average pitch for Porcello. There it is. And Francisco is out on strikes. Caught him looking at the breaking ball. Change up followed by a real nice bender to get Francisco looking. This is our Comerica Bank game summary. All the runs in this contest have been scored courtesy of the home run ball, Melky Cabrera. And he went deep in the first inning, 2 2 fastball against Porcello. Miguel Cabrera countered in the bottom half of the inning, and Ian Kinsler, he homered in the third inning off R.A. Dickey. Strike one on Brett Laurie. Ten hits in this game, six for Detroit, four for the Blue Jays. Ball one low, one and one. Laurie had a single his first time up, a couple of hits in the series now. Laurie not hitting for much average, 243, but he's got some quickness in that bat, and he's got some power too. That ball he hit against Albuquerque last night, you don't see many right-handed batters go the opposite way like he did on the line. Turned out to be a huge home run for them last night. They had a 2 0 lead. That ballooned to 5 0. Little chopper hit toward first base. It'll stay fair right at the bag. Three unassisted, two outs. Here's that homer that he hit last night. It got out of the ballpark in a hurry. It was a slider up in the strike zone thrown by Albuquerque, and that pretty much put the game out of reach. They needed that home run because J.D. Martinez hit a three-run shot in the bottom of the nine. Here's Josh Tolley. In there for strike one. Brett Osmus has done a, a marvelous job at uh, utilizing the talents of J.D. Martinez. Doesn't play every day. He picks his spots with J.D. And every time that he does, seems like J.D. comes up big. Tolley is out for three. Going to be a one, two, three innings. We head to the bottom of the fifth. Miguel Cabrera going to be leading it off. And you're watching Tigers baseball tonight on Fox Sports Detroit, presented by Bell Tires.
evening, one of the runs driven in by Miguel Cabrera. Let's take a peek at the Jimmy Johns freaky fast delivery of the game. Miguel Cabrera, his first time up, the first pitch he saw from Dickey was a fastball at 82 miles an hour. But that doesn't tell the whole story. Dickey has thrown 79% of his pitches today. Knuckleballs, but Miggy went up there sitting on a fastball, got it, and didn't miss it. Cabrera Martinez and Torrey Hunter here in the fifth. The Tigers two runs, six hits. Jays one run, four hits. Let's see how he approaches Miggy this time up. He struck him out on three knuckleballs last time up. Ball one outside. Cabrera's home run was his 11th of the year. High, towering fly ball. Shallow center, Ghosts and Cabrera, and it's Ghosts. One gone. Bring up Victor Martinez. Victor is 0 for 1 with a walk. Little tap slowly first base side Dickey will pick it up fall down as he throws him out. He somehow got it to first base. Two up two down. Nice play by Ari Dickey with Victor Martinez running down the line. Victor had to step over the hand of Dickey. Dickey went down to one knee and simply flipped the ball over the head of Martinez. It was almost like he shot put that ball out there to first base. That's good analysis right there. So with two outs here is Torrey. And it's in for a strike. Hunter not so sure. Oh for two fly ball ground out. Here's the 0 1. Now quickly 0 and 2. Right back to the pitcher, a soft line is flagged down by Dickey. It'll be a 1 2 3 inning for the Jays right hander. Five in the books tonight. The Tigers still lead by one.
Skell, who handles the infielders for the Tigers, and he gives us a little bit of a scouting report on what to expect out of Eugenio Suarez, the newest Tiger. One of the keys for him is going to be uh, staying within himself, uh, not try to push it too hard and try to hit home runs, you know, stay hitting the ball to the opposite way, uh, uh, make sure he bonds in, on the right situations and do the little game. I think if he can do that and uh, he's able to play the defense that everybody believes that he can play, he can stay here for a long time. And it appears that uh, Eugenio will get his first opportunity tomorrow. Brad Ausmus said more than likely he'll be in the lineup tomorrow against the lefty. Sounds like the uh, kind of game that Omar Vizquel played uh, during his illustrious the big league career. Yeah borderline and I think will be Hall of Fame career for Vizquel. Jay Happ will be on the mound tomorrow for Blue Jays the lefty there's Omar. Yeah, he's got a legitimate chance of getting in. Yeah, with the defense he played in 2,800 knocks, he's got a really good chance. Anthony Ghost leading it off, and he skies one in the air to center, right at Jackson. Ghost is out one away. Well, here's what David Dabrowski saw last week when he went down to see uh, the Double A AA and Triple A teams play. Suarez obviously playing in Triple A, and Suarez is putting up some real good numbers offensively. Defensively, they say he still has some work to do on the routine plays, but he makes the really great plays, and I think a lot of athletic shortstops are that way until they get really consistent and really slow the game down at the major league level. There's a strike called on Reyes. Would you say it is easier to get more consistent with the routine play as opposed to the other way around? In other words, if you can make the great play, that's a bonus. That's a bonus. No doubt. I mean, that takes athleticism and not thinking about it. But uh, you have mental lapses sometimes uh, as a young player when you don't make the routine play consistently. But I'm sure Omar Vizquel, along with uh, Brad Ausmus, uh, they will get uh, Suarez grounded to make sure that uh, he just stays within himself. I mean, that's the biggest thing with this Tigers team. We talked about Castellanos. You have so many veteran players, so many guys to look up to, that you really don't have to try to do more than what you're capable of doing. Offensively, he has gotten it done this year at Double A AA and Triple A. Was hitting 302. And Brad Osman said that's why he's here. Uh, they need a little bit more production out of the latter third of their batting order. It's that simple. Now uh, Rick ready with the one-two. Reyes pops this one up. Kinsler going back. Jackson coming in. AJ calls him off. Two gone. It's going to bring up Melky Cabrera. Meanwhile, Porcello, after giving up the home run to Melky Cabrera in the first inning, has been awfully good. He also gave up a base hit in the fourth inning, and then and Bautista was retired on the double play ball off the bat of Lind. He's retired seven straight since then. Strike one. Milky Cabrera, 75 hits on the year now, which is second in the major leagues. Here's the 1 1 pitch. Two balls, one strike. Porcello is only 11 of 20 in first pitch strikes. And in the years past, he'd be hurt because he would always throw fastballs when he was behind. But nowadays, it's changeup, it's curveball. And that's what keeps a hitters off balance. That was a changeup right there in the 2 1 count uh, that Melky Cabrera was able to lay off of. But that gives you a kind of a glimpse at why Porcello has been so good this year. It's his off speed pitches, and he's throwing some of those. In fastball friendly counts. Line drive, fair ball to the corner it goes. The ball was smoked. On his way to second, Melky Cabrera, and he will get in there standing up with a two base hit. Eighty seven mile per hour pitch that was right down the middle end. 
boy, it was right in his happy zone. He scorched that. Second extra base hit of the night for Melky Cabrera. He's going to bring up Jose Bautista. A little bit inside. One ball, no strikes. And Bautista's breakout season was back in 2010, where he hit over 300 and he hit 54 home runs. And of the 54 homers he hit, just one was the opposite way. And I believe it was the final series of the season against the Minnesota Twins at Target Field. 54 homers, one to right field. But that, as you say now, is a little bit different for him because he's using all parts of the field. No doubt Kevin Seitz has had a huge impact on the way that he thinks the game now. Jose Bautista, he simply will beat that shift if you overshift him to the pool field. In the infield, especially with runners in scoring position. And therefore, he's gone from a 254 lifetime hitter in the major leagues to, well, where he's at right now, which is 311. Adam Lind waiting on deck. Here's the 3 0. He's taking, and it's ball four, a four pitch walk after the double by Melky Cabrera. Time for a game break now. We go back to the studio and Mickey York. Thanks, Mick. Here the Tigers are on top two to one, but Porcello will get a visit from Jeff Jones. Something else that uh, Jose Bautista has done a lot of this year, he's walked a lot. That was his 48th uh, base on balls this year, which paces the American League. He actually leads the major league. That's how much he has walked. There's uh, apparently going to be some activity now in the Detroit bullpen as Brad Ausmus got on the phone. And Brad's going to make sure that they don't let this one get away from them. Porcello has pitched very well and so far this evening. And this is coming on the heels of a six walk performance by Porcello in his last outing against the Oakland Athletics, but he was able to win that game. Well, it started with a two out double by Cabrera, and now a four pitch walk to Bautista. 364 with runners in scoring position for Adam Lind. E. Well, he hit the ball on the ground twice against Porcello. The last time it resulted in a double play. Oh, and one on Adam Lind. Came in batting 415 over his last 12 games. He has been swinging a hot bat. Center field Jackson on his horse. He is not going to get this one. It'll go to the warning track. One run is in. Here comes Bautista. He will score and Lind with a two out, two base hit. He drives in two to give the Blue Jays the lead. He got himself an 89 mile per hour fastball at the top of the strike zone and got on top of it and ripped it over the head. Of Austin Jackson. Austin Jackson caught the ball on one bounce. He nearly got there. And by the time he got it in, Jose Bautista, who had been walked with two outs, was able to come all the way around from first base to score. I didn't think Jackson had a chance to get that close to that ball. Yeah, he nearly got there. Here's Encarnacion. Ball outside. And these Jays, they can just swing it. This is one of your better offenses uh, in the American League and really in baseball. A couple of switch hitters at the top, the speed, power in the middle, and the guys in the latter third of their batting order, they're doing nice work with runners in scoring position because they're always hitting with runners on. Yeah, they are, as they were here in this inning. It all started with a two out double, and they've cashed in now. They're for real this year. 
John Gibbons feels really good about his team in 2014, but they will only go as far as their pitching takes them. Second tour of duty for Gibbons as the manager. Three balls, no strikes. Had a shot there of uh, John Gibbons and DeMarlo Hale, the bench coach, was uh, sitting right next to him. DeMarlo Hale is interviewed for a lot of different managerial jobs. At some point in time, DeMarlo will get an opportunity to manage in the big leagues. His name always seems to come up. Mm -hmm. That's in there a strike. Good baseball man. He has managed in the minor leagues. He's coached a lot of years in the big leagues. Coach first base, coach third base. Now he's bench coach, which is a natural progression for someone that would like to manage his own squad someday. Three one pitch. Checked it. Strike called. Three and two on Encarnacion. Tiger's activity is Phil Cope. Each ball club now with six hits. Two run double by Adam Lind has put the Jays on top three to two. Strike out and a ground out, or a strike out and a single, I should say, for Encarnacion tonight. It was one for three with a double last night, and he shoots this one in the air to left field, shallow. And Davis said, "We're troubled with it." The Rajay made the play. They'll settle for two, but take the lead. Jays have the lead again. It's now three to two as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning, and some uh, minor league all stars were announced. Congratulations to these West Michigan Whitecaps 2014 Midwest League All Stars selections: Austin Kubitsa, right-handed pitcher Buck Farmer, and Joe Mansply, Javier Betancourt, and Winton Bernard. Congratulations to you all. Possibly some future All Stars at this level. Yeah, we hope so. Good luck in your All Star game. That's a nice venue. In West Michigan. Real nice minor league venue to take in a game. Well, Larry Dickey back to the hill now, leading it by a run as Jackson starts it off. Austin 0 for 2, strikeout, fly ball, hit it hard to right field his last time up, and he looks at a ball inside. Jackson Avila Castellanos. Here's the 2 0. 2 and 1 on AJ. 82 mile per hour fastball poured in by R.A. Dickey. Poured. 
At 82. <laughs> Ball inside. Three and one. There's Avila waiting on deck. Jackson trying to reach here. Three and two the count. Dickey was an original original number one draft choice coming out of college, the University of Tennessee. And he took a picture that ended up on Sports Illustrated and the trainer of the team that he had been drafted by noticed that something didn't look quite right with his right arm in the photo. So they had him come in and they took a look at the elbow. They did the MRI and they did all those things and they noticed he didn't have a ligament in the right elbow. No elbow in the right elbow when he was drafted in 96 by the Texas Rangers. His signing bonus went from 800,000 all the way down to $70,000. Oh. Yeah, that's a tough one to swallow. Rangers basically said take it or leave it. 75,000 and Jackson gets a walk. That was something. Really is a uh, fascinating story. By the way, tomorrow the Tigers face the Blue Jays at 108. First 15,000 fans receive this. Max Scherzer 2013 Cy Young Award bobblehead. For tickets, call 866-66-TIGER. But give uh, R.A. Dickey some credit. I mean, he took the signing bonus. He went on to uh, pitch in a more conventional way the first few years of his uh, career. And then finally the knuckleball came and He's made all that glue back now. Yeah. <laughs> and then some. <laughs> a lot of glue. Swing and a miss. Well, Dickey, uh, I guess, you know, after several years of not just being able to uh, get over the hump in the minor leagues as a conventional pitcher, decided back in 05 to make the conversion to a knuckleballer because as a youngster, he had a really good one. Just messing around with it, of course. Now he's making a pretty good living with it in the major leagues. Want to Cy Young with it. R.A. Dickey. The R.A. stands for Robert Allen. Nashville, Tennessee is hometown. Jackson represents the tying run. Told you earlier that it was very surprising that Nick Castellanos was able to steal his first base of his major league career with Dickey on the mound. Dickey does a very nice job of limiting the stolen bases against him. And you wouldn't think it would be that way with a guy that has a knuckleball. You would think the teams that have guys that could run, they would run at will. In for a strike. We have a little fun here with uh, R.A. Dickey this evening. It's our Xfinity. A high speed pitch. 83 top fastball for R.A. 62 obviously the knuckleball. 80% of the Total pitches he has thrown tonight of the 85 have been knuckleballs. Jackson back again. Doing a nice job of keeping his double play in order. Six out of seven this year for Jackson in the stolen base column. Fastball. Missed outside. Check that. The one is his changeup. I mean, his knuckleball. His knuckleball. Yeah, the two. The two is a fastball. <laughs> he might be the only one in baseball like that. Even the signs are unconventional. <laughs> Here's a look at the uh, catcher's glove, which looks more like a first baseman's glove. And the one-two. Line back up the middle of the center base hit. Jackson to second base and Avila has his second hit of the night. 
And here come the Tigers right back. Two on, nobody out. And Dickey was able to get ahead of Avila. No balls, two strikes. Worked the count to one and two. Avila got one of those floaters at the bottom of the strike zone and just hit right back through the mouth. Right back through the box. I think Castellanos is bunting here. I'm going to say no. I might be with you on that. The bunt is in order, though, but I'm just going to say no. Aaron Loop is warming up in the bullpen for Toronto. No sign of bunt. Ball one inside. I just love watching Dave Clark at third base, man. Animated. Oh, he just, after every pitch, he turns around, puts his hands on his hips, and just stares into the dugout. Quickly. He wants to get that sign from Brad Ausmus very quick so he can relay it to the base runners. And then he does his thing. And then he'll turn around after getting the sign and. He'll point to the outfielders. He'll tell the guys, watch the line drive, check your outfielders. DC. Here's the 2 0 inside. Three balls and no strikes. And it's getting a little sticky now for R.A. Dickey. He is in a little trouble here. You wonder if they're going to give him the green light right here. But a lot of times in this particular situation, Dickey will throw you that little 82 mile per hour fastball. So they might just turn Cassiano's loose. That doesn't mean he's going to swing at it, but more than likely, Dickey throws a fastball right here. Nope. He took it for a strike. He sure did. So we'll see what Dickey comes back with here now with the count three and one. Ooh, big rip there and another fastball. Two seam fastball. That had a little late life to it. I mean, that was a little dip and down to the inside corner on that pitch. Wasn't a straight fastball. Probably too risky to start the runners here on the 3 2 pitch. Nobody out. Runners hold and a ground ball foul, third base side. That's 93 now for Dickey. Not sure the pitch count means as much for Knuckleballer. Rick Porcello gave up a couple of runs and the lead in the top of this inning. Tigers trying to. Bounce right back for him. RA has thrown as many as 121 in his start this year. It was against the Phillies. Jackson, Avila, the Tiger base runners. He lost in ball four. Some really patient at bats against RA Dickey here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. It's going to be it. You want Luke to come in to face Romine. Luke might just be facing JD Martinez. Good point. Looks like that may be what's going to happen. We'll see. 94 pitches, and R.A. Dickey will depart. The wheels are turning here at the ballpark. It is 3 to 2 Toronto. Wall side windows pitching change. The Tigers have them loaded, and we'll be back.
Coming out of the bullpen now for the Blue Jays and the Tigers with a big time threat going here. Lupa has three pitches. He's got a fastball. He's got a slider. He's got a changeup. Numbers not bad this year. At 26 games, he has 10 holes. The ERA very respectable. Uh, 22 strikeouts in 13 base on balls, and he's really tough on left-handers. Left-handers hitting only 171 against him. That's why J.D. Martinez pinch hitting for Andrew Romine. Martinez homered in last night's game. R.A. Dickey turns it over to the bullpen here. With nobody out, the Tigers loaded him up with two walks and a single. And now J.D. Martinez. J.D. fouls it back out of play. Went in for the first pitch. Hit a big home run in last night's game. It came in the ninth inning. Aaron Loop has inherited 28 base runners this year. Only five of those have come around to touch home plate. So that's pretty good. 28 base runners, five have scored. Way high, one ball, one strike. Numbers really not that bad against right handers. He's a specialist. He throws across his body. He stands on the first base side of the pitching rubber and he steps toward their dugout and really throws across his body. It literally looks like the ball is coming from the second baseman, Brett Laurie. Born in Louisiana, went to college at Tulane. And Martinez lays off. He's an intelligent fellow. Man. There he is. Tulane's a really good school. Loop appeared in 64 games last year out of the bullpen. 247 ERA. Tough spot to come in here. Bases loaded, nobody out. Porcello hoping for some support. Strike called, and the count is now two and two. That is such a good pitch. We told you he throws across his body, so he's throwing from this arm slot, low three quarter arm slot, and he threads the needle on an inside fastball to JD Martinez. Real good pitch by Aaron Luke. Ooh. Swing and a miss struck him out. Change piece. Martinez brought out the fishing pole that time and came up empty. And J.D. Martinez goes after the first pitch. He fouls it off. He takes one. Now the count's in his favor. And a real good pitch. Fastball inside followed up by fading change up away from J.D. Martinez. Almost like a screwball. Here is Rajay Davis. Rajay pops it up. Foul ground behind the plate. Totally makes the catch, and just like that, two outs. Dude, the Tigers can't squander this opportunity. Here's Kensler to try and make good now with two away. And one of the things that Brad Osmond's talked about at the beginning of the game, one of the reasons why they brought the kid Suarez up to help them with at the bottom of their batting order, are they, although Rajay batting first here today. Two outs. Kinsler stands in. Homered in his middle at bat. He's one for three. Strike one. A strike out of the pinch hitter Martinez. A pop up from Davis. Tigers have not scored since the Kinsler home run back in the third inning. They trail here three to two. Adam Lind a two run double on the top of the sixth. Now the 0 1. One ball, one strike. Jackson led things off with a walk, single by Avila, walked to Castellanos. That was the end for Dickey. 
Loop has come on to get a couple of big outs. But he needs one more to pitch out of this mess. Soft little pop up and caught by the first baseman Encarnacion and the Tigers waste a golden opportunity. Bases loaded, nobody out, and they fail to score. Year old Eugenio Suarez will make his major league debut coming on as a defensive replacement here after the uh, pinch hitting situation. When Martinez was pinch hitting for Romine. Suarez knew he was coming into the game. Well, he's nervous, and there's no doubt about that. But after a brief conversation with the bench coach, Gene Lamont, he goes down, he stretches, gets loose, and, and now in the ball game. So Suarez steps onto a big league field for the first time here in the regular season and he will take over at short. Meanwhile the Tigers have left nine men on base in this game and that really stung in the bottom of the sixth. Bases loaded nobody out they came up empty. Juan Francisco Brett Laurie and Josh Tolley will stand in for the Blue Jays facing Porcello. Francisco is 0 for 2. Strikeout, double play ball. Three runs, six hits for Toronto, two runs, seven hits for Detroit. Here's the 1 0. Grounded foul. Here's the breakdown on Rick now through 100 total pitches in this game. 64 strikes. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. Two balls, one strike on Juan Francisco. Brett Laurie on deck. High fly ball left field. Ajay backing up. That'll nestle into his glove. One gone. Well, as promised earlier in the game, we have the AT&T fan photo of the game tonight. Tweet your photo to hashtag Detroit fan photo for a chance to be shown an upcoming game broadcast. It is brought to you by AT&T. One out now for Brett Laurie. And he looks at a strike from Porcello. Rick surrendered the lead on the two run double by Adam Lind in the sixth inning. Giving him three runs on six hits tonight. 
Here's the 0 1. Golfed in the air to center field, hit a mile high to Jackson. Two up, two down. Saturday, it's a full day of MLB action beginning with the Indians taking on the Rangers on Fox Sports 1. Then it's Baseball Night in America on Fox Sports as David Ortiz and the Red Sox come to Comerica Park. Our doubleheader begins Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern on Fox Sports 1 and continues at 7 p.m. Eastern on Fox. Here's the out distribution tonight. And three strikeouts, eight ground outs, eight flyouts off the bats of the Toronto Blue Jays. Yeah, Josh Tolley hitting now. He's put the ball on the ground twice. One ball, one strike on Tolley. Jays got one in the first, two in the sixth, and the Tigers with solo homers in the first and third innings. Grounded foul. One and two. Anthony Ghost waiting on deck. Bouncer back up the middle. Suarez to his left. Handles his first big league opportunity flawlessly. One, two, three inning. Time to stretch. Detroit is brought to you by Arby's. Try Arby's Smokehouse Brisket Sandwich today. And by Bell Tire. Get the lowest tire price, period. Bell Tire. Back here at the ballpark. Tigers down by a run. Got to get the offense going. They are trailing 3 to 2. Kinsler and Cabrera. Solo homers each for the Tigers. That's it. Melky Cabrera has had a big night here for the Jays and the Tigers offense. Nine left on base. Yeah, baby steps for the Tigers. They're getting them on tonight, but they're not getting them in. And we'll see if they can change that here in the seventh inning. Miguel Cabrera looks at a ball low. Yesterday they had a difficult time of getting on against Drew Hutchinson, you know, the starter for the Toronto Blue Jays. Martinez to follow, and then Hunter. That is in for a strike right at the knees. 1 1. And Porcello has a six game win streak on the line here this evening. Checked his swing, and he did not go. Luke took over for the starter. 
Dickey and did a tremendous job leaving the bases loaded. Check that six game winning streak. Porcello lost against Texas on the 24th, two starts ago. All else, pretty much W's, with the exception of the second start of the year for Porcello. Here's the 2 2. Three and two now on Cabrera. Miguel has gone to his uh, two strike approach here in the entire at bat against Luke. Not necessarily striding, just simply spread out, uh, picking the left heel off the ground and putting it right back down to make sure he gets a real good look at the baseball. He draws a walk. So the leadoff man is on here in the seventh. We got Victor Martinez. Hitless so far tonight, although he has a walk, that was back in the first. In his last 35, Victor has hit safely in 30 of them. In there for strike one. Three runs on six hits tonight for the visiting Blue Jays. Two runs on seven hits for Detroit. Rolled foul back into the Tiger dugout, and the count is 0 and 2. There is action in the Detroit bullpen. Evan Reed and Jabba Chamberlain. Pulled foul. Martinez had a couple of hits in the opener last night. Brenner represents the tying run at first base. We're in the bottom of the seventh. The 0 2 is outside as Martinez would not chase after it one and two. Where Victor does a lot of his damage, seventh inning and beyond, 343 this year. He's also done a lot of damage batting right handed this year, as far as the average is concerned. One, two sails outside, two balls and two strikes on Martinez. When you get ahead of guys like Miguel Cabrera and also Victor Martinez. It's not a given that you're going to put them away. And both guys are really good two strike hitters. Bouncing ball to short. That should be two. Reyes to second one. Warriors really is a tailor made double play. Six, four, three, two gone. Going to bring up Tory Hunter. It's the eighth in a double play that uh, and Victor Martinez is grounded into you know, this season. Ball one. Luke to this point has done marvelous work out of the bullpen for Toronto. Pitching out of the bases loaded jam in the sixth. Now getting a double play here in the seventh. Chopped foul, third base side. One ball, one strike. Hunter hit one right back at the pitcher his last time up. A line drive right at Dickey. 
Fly ball and a force out his other two times up. Way outside. Two and one. Brett Cecil, the left hander, warming up. He's been a mainstay in their bullpen last number of years. Cecil. Swing and a miss. Up and around the letter. That was a situation right there by Torrey Hunter where he knew he was going to get the fastball from Loop in. He swung at it before the ball left Loop's hand. From that angle that Loop throws from, he's got a pretty good arm. 94 with that last fastball. Ground ball to second, right off the end of the bat. Lori gobbles it up. The inning over. Seven in the books here at the ballpark. Still a one run game. Uh, Rick Porcello pitched seven good innings here today. Gave up six hits to the Toronto Blue Jays. That's a quality start. Uh, he did a lot of things right. Field his position through several ground balls. And they also flied out harmlessly a few times in the ball game to all of the outfielders. Porcello with a real nice job here tonight. And right now, uh, he is in line to take the loss unless the Tigers are able to come back and score a couple of runs in their final six outs. So the Tigers are going back to the bullpen and right hander Evan Reed will come on now for Detroit. Evan Reed's a hard thrower fastball will go anywhere from 95 up to 97. Uh, 357 ERA but the power department you know, for a pitcher the 19 strikeouts against just five walks for Evan Reed so far this year. So Reed takes over in our wall side windows pitching change and his. Work now will take place in the eighth, and he's going to face the bottom of the lineup. It'll be Ghost, and then the top, Reyes and Cabrera. His job right now is to keep this a one run deficit. Anthony Ghost, strike out and a fly out. Foul straight back, 0 and 1. Porcello retired the last four in a row after the two run double by Lind. Now the 0 1 to Ghost. No balls, two strikes. And now Miggy and both Castellanos get back up. There's Reyes on deck. And the 0 2. 97 that time from Reed. Well, if you're Evan Reed here, you don't want to make a mistake on the 0 2 pitch. If you're going to go upstairs, you got to go a little bit higher. The 
Bouncing in, one ball, two strikes on Ghost. It was Ghost that started the rally in the ninth inning last night for the Jays with a base on balls, then a steal. Here he is batting in the eighth inning with his team up by one. And the one two. Got him, strike three. Buckled his knees, Ghost could not pull the trigger. The slider there thrown by Evan Reed, it stays on the fastball plane to the last couple of feet, and the ball simply dips inside on the inner third for a called third strike. And from the home plate umpire, Jim Wolf. Jose Reyes, 0 for 3 tonight. He's average now at 246. Wave and a miss. Reyes back in the day was leading the league in steals and triples. Real exciting player. He also won a batting title you know, one year in New York. Here's the 0 1. Slicing one into left center field out of the reach of Suarez. One out single for Reyes. Well, he's got 11 steals this year. Well, something's got to give if Evan Reed gives Avila a chance to throw. Uh, Avila's been on point you know, pretty much all year with his throws down to second base. And it'll have to be just that if they're going to get Reyes. Eleven out of twelve for Reyes. Strike on the outer edge. That is the seventh hit of the game for the Blue Jays. That means both teams now with seven hits. And Tim Leeper, their first base coach, has a stopwatch in his hand, and after that first delivery. And by Evan Reed, he went over to whisper something in Jose Reyes's ear, and pretty much telling him what that time was of Reed getting the ball to the catcher Alex Avila, and that will determine whether he thinks he can steal the base or not. See the stopwatch in his right hand. Oh, almost! He slipped. They almost got him. It looked like they did get him. But he just got back there. We've seen uh, Brad Osmus uh, pitch out uh, quite often this year. This might be one of those situations where he feels like he needs to help Avila to keep Reyes out of scoring position. That is as close as you can get without calling him out, no doubt. And it gets away from Miggy. That's what speed will do. And so Reyes will get into scoring position now. That might be an error on uh, Miguel. Well, it's going to be an error on someone, and I think you're right. I think it's going to be on Miggy. Oh, well, they've given it to Reed. So put the runner at second. Oh, and won the count. Outside, one ball, one strike on Melky Cabrera. Big night for him. Double homer. He has scored twice. And the 1 1 outside, two balls, one strike. The 
Cabrera broke in with the Yankees. He's also played with Atlanta, Kansas City, and Toronto. Pickoff throw, but Reyes gets back. Reyes, excellent speed and scoring position at second. One run ball game here in the eighth. Here's the 2 1 instead of bluff back to second. And one more look at the at pickoff play. This is before the air. On a play at first base, he was called for safe by and David Rockley. Well, when you slow it down as much as we did there, it looked like it did just get back in. Ground ball, base hit left field. Reyes had to wait for it to get through. They're going to try and score him anyway. Rajay's throw to the plate, and he is safe. Cabrera takes second base, and it's 4-2 to two, Toronto. Reyes wasn't running all that hard from third, third base, and he also held up. I was surprised at Luis Rivera. Uh, sent him home, but he saw once Reyes got to third base, Rajay Davis uh, did not have the ball in the glove, therefore challenged Rajay and Reyes with his speed able to score. Single RBI, second on the throw. I think Reyes might have been surprised that he was being sent on a ball hit to left field, especially after he waited for it to get through. You're right, but he had to speed the score. Now we have a confab on the mound. Jeff Jones coming out. Blue Jays tonight, two out of three with men in scoring position. Reed's got that big arm, his fastball. He's thrown several at 97, but we told you last night that Jose Bautista has one of the quickest bats for a right hander in the game of baseball. Lightning quick bat. Base hit and a walk in this game for Bautista. Strike one on Jose. That is the eighth hit of the game for the Blue Jays. They have grabbed a two run lead now here in the eighth. Bautista watches one slide outside. 1-1. One, one. Forty-one RBIs this year for Bautista. One and two. Didn't see the fastball yet, has he? No, he hasn't. Here's the one two. Still has it. Two balls, two strikes. Five straight sliders and nothing inside. And Bautista on balls on the inner half, whether they're down at the belt buckle or up in, he does really good work on balls inside. Here's what I'm talking about so regarding and Bautista. 400 across the board. Belt buckle high, 500 down and in. Every pitch that he's gotten from Reed has been away from him. Runner goes to third and a bouncing ball. Here comes Castellanos who overran the ball and has no play and everybody is safe. Nick Castellanos was going to the bag uh, to cover the bag on the steal. 
possibility by Melky Cabrera. Then he tried to regroup. It appeared that he slipped. And he tried to redirect the body to get back to the ball. Therefore, uh, wasn't able to make the play. Here comes Brad Osmus. And he's going to have a conversation now with Tony Randazzo at third. What do you think he's arguing here? I'm not sure. Well, he's gotten the umpires to convene at least. I'm not sure what he could have been. Uh, if there was any uh, interference. Well, they're not going to uh, convene. Looks like he was calling the other umpires, but it's just going to go as base hit. That's going to put runners at first and third. It's the second infield hit of the night for Bautista. Still only one out. And here's the guy that did damage in his last at bat. Two run double by. Adam Lind in the sixth inning gave the Blue Jays the lead. Breaking ball in for strike one. That is the ninth hit of the night now for the Jays. Oh and two. Lid now has 17 RBIs after his two run double in the sixth. Those are the last runs that Rick Porcello allowed. He went a total of seven innings tonight. And Rick gave up three runs. Quality start for Porcello this evening. Jays have added one more here in the eighth. And threatening for more. The one two. That's going to be a fair ball down the right field line. And score one, maybe two. It's going to go all the way to the wall. Bautista is going to be held at third base. It'll be a two base hit, one run in to make it five to two, Toronto. Second consecutive double for Lind. Yeah, he done major damage this year with runners in scoring position. That's a slider that's down and in. And Lind simply turns on it. And Bautista running from third base with good speed, but their third base coach, Luis Rivera, uh, he was all the way down that third baseline uh, to make sure that he had a real good look to see if the exchange by Hunter to Kinsler was a clean one. And once he saw it was clean, uh, he simply held up Bautista. So the Blue Jays now four for five with men in scoring position, and Encarnacion will not get a chance to hit. They're going to walk him intentionally. Three RBIs tonight for Lynn. And they're probably going to bring in Phil Coke to go after the hitter in the on deck circle, Francisco. And more than likely, John Gibbons will counter with the pinch hitter. 2 0 is outside. Three balls, no strikes, and one more wide one. Francisco on deck. And ball four, so the intentional walk loads the bases with Blue Jays. That'll bring Brad Osmus out, and he's going to want Phil Coke to come in. Five two in favor of the Jays. A ten hit night for Toronto tonight. And Evan Reed gives up the baseball. Back to the bullpen go the Tigers. Phil Coke will come.
Got the bases loaded and one out. And we remind you to be in the house this Sunday when the Tigers host the Boston Red Sox. 807 start. Tickets call 866 66 Tiger or visit Tigers.com. Tigers swept them at Fenway earlier this year. Boston playing a little bit better these days. That they are. Phil Coke now is the new Tigers pitcher. It's been a rough year so far for Phil. In 16 games, the ERA sits at six and a half. In his last five games against the Toronto Blue Jays, uh, Coke has not given up a run. Tollison will pinch hit. Steve Tollison batting for Francisco. They are loaded up with Blue Jays. Ball one inside. Phil Coke has inherited eight base runners this year. Half of those have come around to score. Five runs on ten hits tonight for the Jays. The Tigers two runs seven hits. And the 1 0. Swing and a miss. Tigers better get it together in a hurry here. They are in a tough stretch as far as their schedule is concerned. Uh, they had to play Oakland and then they went to Seattle. Seattle was a good a pitching team but challenged offensively. But Toronto, Boston, and then Chicago on the schedule. So they need to pick it up a notch. And that Chicago series, a four game set on the road. That'll get back out of play. One ball, two strikes. Good firm fastball there thrown by Phil Coke at uh, 95 miles an hour. He's had a coming schedule for the Tigers. You see the four coming up in Chicago starting on Monday after this homestand ends. And then uh, other Central Division teams Minnesota, KC, Cleveland. One and two on Steve Tollison with the bases loaded, one out. Low. Two balls, two strikes. White Sox able to gain a game on the Tigers last night. They come in four out and back up to 500. Tigers and Chicago, the only teams right now in the Central at or above 500. And Tigers, a seven game lead in the loss column over the White Sox. Two and two on Steve Tollison. Ground ball right by Miggy Kinsler has it to second. That's all they're going to get. Another run will score. It'll be an RBI for Tollison. And yeah, nice job by Kinsler getting that ball, getting the force out at second base. Six two ball game. It's turned into a three run inning here for the Blue Jays. Here's Brett Laurie with runners at first and third. Way outside and Avila had to go diving for that pitch. And in doing so, perhaps saved a run. Lind at third base, Tallison at first.
key point in this game and perhaps the big turning point in this game was when the Tigers loaded the bases down by a run in the sixth inning. And Aaron Loop came out of the bullpen and got three outs without allowing a run to score. And since then the Jays have added three in the eighth. Here's the 1 0. Popped up. Cabrera at first base to end the inning. However, eight men to the plate. They score three times. We go to the bottom of the eighth at Comerica Park. Jays on top. 6 2. We received news tonight that Don Zimmer, longtime baseball man, has passed away at age 83. And Don Zimmer was uh, one of the great baseball lifers, as they say. He has passed away tonight at the age of 83. And Mario and Rod back here at the ballpark. We welcome you to Comerica, where the Tigers tonight, again, Rod, just could not get the big hit. They faced R.A. Dickey tonight, had him on the ropes in the sixth inning, could not get the big hit with the bases loaded. Yeah, before we get there, Don Zimmer, uh, you know, he was really good friends with Jim Leland, so you know our, our thoughts and prayers are not only with the Zimmer family, but also the people that love uh, Don Zimmer. But to the baseball game here this evening, uh, Dickey, they had him on the ropes. They just couldn't get him. They got some men on, and really in the past, they hadn't been getting men on base. So maybe where they're taking some baby steps by finally having some traffic on the bases tonight. And we'll see if the Tigers have a comeback in them here this evening. The uh, Tigers coming to the plate now here in the eighth inning. 6 2 is our score. And we've got a new pitcher now. That'll be Brett Cecil. 26th game now that Brett Cecil has been in the ERA at 3 8 0. 32 strikeouts for Brett. Just 13 walks out of the bullpen for uh, the Toronto Blue Jays. Austin Jackson is leading it off. Lori now will move to third base. And Steve Tollison stays in the game and plays second. Eric Kratz now is the new catcher as well. So. A couple of changes here for the Blue Jays as we play here in the eighth inning. Two and one the count on Austin Jackson. It is six to two. Strike call two and two the count. Strikeout fly out walk in this game.
Brett Cecil, 27 years of age. He's been a member of the Blue Jays since 09, up and down for a couple of years. Big lefty. Missed it outside, and the count fills now three and two on Jackson. Tigers need some base runners. They're down six two in the eighth. Got him, strike three. Jackson caught looking. The struggles continue for Austin. Several slow breaking balls thrown to Austin Jackson, and then Cecil comes back with a 92 mile per hour fastball. And then it's on the inside, Black called strike three by Jim Wolf. May have been a shade inside, but that's how it's going for Austin right now. One gone. Here's Alex Avila. And that hit him. So Avila will reach base. Check in with Shannon Hogan now with a preview of tonight's Tigers Live. Yeah, as soon as the game ends, Tigers Live continues. Mickey York and Craig Monroe will be in studio, of course. I'll be heading into the clubhouse to talk with Brad Osmus as well as Rick Porcello and several other players. It's all coming up right after the game is over here on Fox Sports Detroit. Tigers Live, don't miss it. Guys, back up to you. All right, Shannon, thanks. Look forward to that. Hopefully there is a comeback in score tonight as Nick Castellanos steps in now with one on one out. Bouncing ball and under the glove of Encarnacion in the short right field. Everybody's safe. And maybe, just maybe, that is the play which opens the gates for the Tigers. Two on one out. The ball was hit right off the bat, so it had a little English on it, and Encarnacion reached out to grab it and didn't watch it into the glove. Be an air on Encarnacion. Here is the first major league at bat for Eugenio Suarez. Just called up today, Danny Worth designated for assignment 288 for Suarez in the minor leagues. He showed some power, six homers at double A, and then two more at triple A. And he rolls it foul 0 and 1. Talk to Bruce Fields today, who was the minor league hitting coordinator for the Detroit Tigers, former big league hitting coach here. And when Alan Trammell was the manager, he said that Suarez, his bat has really come this year. And not only has he been able to hit the ball over the plate, but he's playing with a lot more confidence these days, and his gap to gap power has really improved. Tigers looking for some more punch out of the shortstop position offensively and especially at the bottom part of the lineup. Adding Suarez today from the minor leagues. Chopper hit the third. Laurie's going to tag the bag one off balance throw. Hits the runner. It gets away. Castellanos gets the third. And the Tigers now will have runners at second and third. Blue Jays trying to give this one away. That was a wild throw by Laurie who tried to throw off balance to turn that double play. He got greedy. I mean, you're going to get one out, no problem. But once he gets over there, he throws, and he probably had more time to make a better throw to Encarnacion across the diamond. Encarnacion couldn't help him. The ball appeared to hit a Suarez on the right shoulder. Fielder's choice, E5. Square in the back. Below his neck, and we'll get a pitching change here. It's going to be in for Cecil. Tigers have two on, still a 6 2 game, and we'll be back.
third. Eugenio Suarez sliding at second base. I may have tweaked something. He looks a little bit uh, ginger out there at second. Well, he's going to have to come out for early work tomorrow and work on some sliding for sure. Uh, this does not look good. Ooh. It looked like the left leg got caught underneath him, and he is visibly uncomfortable at second base. I mean, that is a pull growing waiting to happen right there. So Suarez still out there at second base, but you could tell uh, he is feeling it a little bit. We'll see if the Tigers can take advantage of this opportunity now. Dustin McGowan has come in. Yeah, McGowan throws hard. Uh, he has had some starts this season, but now pitching out of the bullpen. We saw him in last night's game. The first pitch he threw was 95 miles an hour. He's always had a great arm, but he's never really been able to stay fully healthy. So Rajay Davis trying to get the Tigers a little bit closer here with a two out hit. We had three errors in this game two by Toronto, one by the Tigers. Ball low and away, 1 0. Second and third for the Tigers, Castellanos and Suarez. Davis one out of four in the ball game tonight. One ball, one strike. And Rajay looking for the fastball there, committed to swinging at the fastball, got a breaking ball from McGowan, and he couldn't hold up. Gowan has had several different surgeries, which has kept him out of three seasons, three full seasons in the big leagues. Had elbow surgery, shoulder surgery. And the 2 1. Two balls, two strikes on Rajay Davis. That's why he's pitching out of the bullpen these days. They're just trying to keep him healthy, they're trying anything to uh, keep him in play on their 25 man raw, so you can see. Uh, that he's got a really good arm. Kinsler on deck. McGowan wants no part of him. Would rather just shut down the inning here. Swing and a miss. Down goes Davis, and the Tigers are turned away in the eighth. So we end of the ninth. It is 6 2 Toronto.
Now as we head to the top of the ninth inning. Uh, Knebel is outstanding in the minor leagues this year and a couple of stops in Erie and also Triple uh, A Toledo his ERA was under one uh, here at the major league level not uh, so good at least in his first three games three in the third he's pitched in three games 736 ERA for the youngster. Major League debut on his last or the last home stand for the Tigers against the Rangers. Open the season at double A Erie and here he is in the major leagues. Corey Knable. Facing Eric Kratz to lead things off then ghosts and then Reyes. First pitch swinging fouls it back out of play 0 and 1. Into the glove for strike two. Kratz has been in pro ball for a long time, mostly in the minor leagues. Broke in in 2002, has had brief big league time with Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, most recently the Phils. He played in 68 games last year, which was a career high. Here's the 0 2. Canable missing low. Way back in the day was originally a draft choice of the Toronto Blue Jays before bouncing around. Here's the one two pitch. Did he go? The appeal and nope be held up. According to David Rackley. Two balls two strikes on Eric Kratz. And Kanemel with the 2 2. Bender missed inside, run it full now, 3 2. Tigers tonight have been out hit, e, uh, make it 10 to 7, but they've stranded 11 men on base in this game. And the Jays have done a good job with men in scoring position. They've left only four. There's the 3 2. Hit hard in the left, base hit. Kratz with a leadoff single. Time now to check out the upcoming pitching matchup presented by Gordon Chevrolet. Jay Happ, a lefty, goes for the Jays tomorrow. And four and two with a 14 ERA, 19 walks, 33 strikeouts for Happ. And Justin Verlander checks in six and four, and 57 strikeouts, 31 base on balls this year for Verlander. Here's Ghosts. Looks that one into the glove of Avila for strike one. Ghost at 241 now. He was called up when Colby Rasmus was placed on the disabled list with the hamstring injury. Strike call, and the count goes 0 2 on Ghost. Tigers in the bottom of the ninth have Kinsler, Cabrera, Martinez, 2, 3, and 4 do up. And right now down six to two. Ground ball base hit. He went the other way and the Jays are knocking on the door again. Two on nobody out. First hit of the night for ghosts. It's going to be 12 now for Toronto in the hit column. 
And Abel missing outside to Jose Reyes. Corey follows Coke, who followed Reed. First seven belong to Rick Porcello tonight. He allowed three runs in seven innings. It's fouled away. One ball, one strike. So while it is a quality start tonight for Porcello, he stands to be the loser in this game if the Tigers aren't able to come back. Reyes on base once tonight, singled, scored a run back in the eighth. He shoots another one foul back out of play. One ball and two strikes. That last one at 95 from Canaveral. Missing inside, two balls, two strikes. Reyes has yet to hit into a double play batting left handed this year. He has grounded into a couple of double plays batting right handed. The chop hit slowly to the right side. Quick shovel toss to first, and they get the out. The runners will advance. One gone, second and third. Well, if you need a gift for Dan, the MLB.com at Bad App and a subscription to its premium features on his favorite smartphone or tablet are a perfect gift for Father's Day. Dad will have access to features such as live look ins, instant replays, live audio, and a whole lot more. For more details, visit MLB.com today. Dad's Day coming up soon, isn't it? About a week away or so. A little more than that. The 15th, Sunday the 15th, to be put, exact. You put your order in yet? I have not. They were good to you last Father's Day. They were always good to me. You always get taken care of too, don't you? Oh, yeah, I got a good family, no doubt. There's a ball outside, one ball to no strikes. And Melky Cabrera. He's had a big night. Single double homer. Five of the six runs for the Jays, scoring in the last three innings. One ball, one strike. Canable throwing from the windup here with runners at second and third. One one is way outside. Two balls, one strike. Well, Canable's put himself in that predictable fastball count, and that's where the Melky Cabrera has made a living in the big leagues. Good fastball hitter. He's looking for the cycle. It's a good ballpark to do it in. If he can find that gap in right center, he might have a shot. Checked it outside, three and one. Homer his first time up doubled in the sixth singled in the eighth here's the three one I'll spray that one foul back out of play full count now. Canable finished his college career at Texas with 37 career saves, which is second all time in Texas baseball history. Here's the 3 2. Bouncing ball right side. Runners will hold. Cabrera will record the out. So there are two gone now. And Jose Bautista will come strolling in. A 
Altis has had a couple of singles, although both of them are the infield variety and a base on balls. He has scored twice. Leadoff single start of the inning. Canabel trying to pitch out of it here with two away. Ball one from Knabel. Jays play here tomorrow. They leave town. Boston comes in over the weekend. Then the Tigers go to Chicago. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Ooh, off of Avila, who is buckled yet again. One ball, one strike. Hammered the right shoulder of Avila. Here's the one one. Good pitch, one and two. We do not have any statistical data on this, but I would imagine Avila leads the league in bruises. Oh, there's no question about that. Seems like every night he's taking a shot. Legs, shoulders, right in the mask. Line drive, fair ball down the left field line. That'll get two more runs in. To second base goes Bautista. And it's 8 2 Toronto. Right down the left field line, just fair. With two strikes, uh, Bautista got himself a hanging breaking ball from Knable. And he took that violent swing and made some serious contact, and you'll see some chalk fly uh, once this ball hits uh, the grass. Thirteenth hit of the game for the Blue Jays. They lead by six now as Bautista gets his tenth double. He's turned into a two run ninth following the three run eighth. Adam Lynn looks at a strike 0 and 1. And Blue Jays have been everything that we've been told they have been all season long. And they're getting some good quality starting pitching, which keeps them in games. Uh, their offense is well balanced with speed and power, some clutch hitting. And their bullpen's not bad. It's a really good 25 man roster that uh, John Gibbons has this year. The big difference in this game runners in scoring position Tigers have not been very good the Blue Jays five for ten this evening. Well the Tigers are one for eight and one of the things that uh, Jim Leland uh, used to always say. It's not necessarily who you play it's when you play him and they're catching the Tigers right now. On a cold downward spiral. Here's the 2 1. Meanwhile, the Tigers catching the Jays after a monstrous month of May. They've been really good. In fact, the Blue Jays coming in with 35 wins. Only Oakland had more coming into play tonight. 2 and 2 the count on Adam Lind. Got him strike three. 
And we'll end the inning, but it's another two runs in there for the Blue Jays. We will go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Two, three, four coming up, including Cabrera and Martinez. Got a big hill to climb, though. Jays on 13 hits and just like we promised you earlier in the game it is Miller time and it is brought to you by Miller Lite. Adam Lind not hitting for a lot of power this year and but he's hitting 400 with runners in scoring position and he got a double uh, back in the sixth inning against Rick Porcello over the head of Austin Jackson to drive in a couple of runs here today. He's driven in three total. So the Blue Jays trying to put the finishing touches on this one. The Tigers have two, three, and four coming up. Kinsler, Cabrera, Martinez. Chad Jenkins is the new pitcher. Only the fourth game that Jenkins has been in. ERA is at nine. Eight runs, 13 hits for the Jays. Tigers have two runs, seven hits. And Jenkins has a fastball, slider, and a changeup. Wave and a miss. That's 91. And with back to back pitches to Ian Kinsler with some real nice late life down the end of the right handed batter. Good sinker ball. Ground ball left side. Reyes backhanding and throwing him out. One gone here in the ninth inning. We'll bring up Cabrera. Not a whole lot going on in that Tiger box score tonight. Couple of hits for Avila and Castellanos toward the bottom. Miguel homered against R.A. Dickey in the first inning of this contest and it's in there a strike. Otherwise a walk in his last at bat. Tigers led two to one they had a pair of homers early Cabrera Kinsler would be the last lead that they would have. Another ground ball left side Lowry has it at third. Miggy is out and there are two gone. And the Tigers have one final out. Victor Martinez will stand in. Jays are trying to go to 36 and 24.
Ground ball back to the mound. That'll do it. Jenkins with the underhand toss, an easy one, two, three, ninth inning, and the Blue Jays have come to Comerica Park and they've